Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for granting us grace to continue these teachings. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with our teachings on man. This is part two of our teachings on man. In part one, we did a teaching on the spirit of man. Part two, we shall do a teaching on the soul of man. And in part three, we shall be doing a teaching on the flesh of man. Our Bible text is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We explain that man is a spirit. Primarily, man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives inside a body. We are spirit, soul, and body. And the most important part of man is the spirit man. Unfortunately, what we discover is that for most Christians, the part that they pay attention to is the flesh, the outer man. That is the one they feed. That is the one they clothe. That is the one they pamper. That is the one that they all attention and they ignore the spirit man. Jesus Christ mentions in John chapter 6 verse 63, it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Therefore, the part of man that every Christian should pay attention to the most is the inner man. Because that is the part of you that determines your life. It, that is the part that connects with God. After the spirit man is the soul. The soul is between the flesh and the spirit. And the soul is equally very, very important because it is the seat of feelings. It is the seat of your emotion. It is the seat where you express whether you are happy or you are sad and it has a very vital part of you that your spirit man must control and that is your mind. But before we go there, we should refer to Ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 to 18. The Bible tells us there that we are in a warfare. And the word of God commands us, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. And from verse 12, the Bible started listing the five categories of the forces we are fighting. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And then the Bible started listing the weapons of our warfare. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the guardrail of truth, the sandals of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and runs up in verse 18 saying, praying always. But there is one thing that the Bible did not mention there. The Bible mentions we are in a warfare, mentions the enemies, mentions the parts of our armor, but did not mention the battleground. Where will the two forces meet to fight? Because if there is no battleground, then there is no battle. The two opposing forces are to meet somewhere 
to fight. So where is the battleground in our spiritual warfare? Where is the battleground? That is why we need to pay attention to our soul. Because the battleground is in the soul realm. The soul of man is made up of three components also. The soul is the seat of the mind. The soul is the seat of the emotions. The soul is the seat of the will. Your mind, your emotions, and your will, they are all in the soul realm. And the most crucial component in your soul realm is your mind. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. It is your mind that controls your emotions. It is your mind that controls your will. You act according to what you have inside your mind. Therefore, every Christian must pay attention to what is going on inside his mind. Our mind is crucial to our survival as well as our victory in Christ. We need to understand one thing that what Satan is aiming for, what is gone in for, is to take control of your mind. Once he takes control of your mind, he can control your life. In fact, he can frustrate your spirit man. That your spirit man will just not be able to operate again in your life. When Satan takes the mind. Let me quote from two old men of God. When I say old, I mean in years gone by. Not modern day ministers of the gospel. The first person I will quote is John G. Lake. Reverend Lake said, A man's life will be as the character of his thoughts. If he thinks evil, he will be evil. If he thinks holy, he will be holy. His outward life will be as his inner impulse is. Smith Wigglesworth said, and I quote, the devil knows that if he can capture your thought life, he has won a mighty victory over you. I repeat that. The devil knows that if he can capture your thought life, he has won a mighty victory over you. I come across people everywhere I go who are held bound by deceptive conditions and these conditions have come about simply because they have allowed the devil to make their minds the place of his stronghold. There are people who are in deceptive conditions because they've allowed the devil to turn their minds into the place of his stronghold. What is stronghold? Stronghold is every lie of the devil that man believes. Every lie that Satan tells a man and the man believes it, that is a stronghold. Therefore, if the devil tells a man, the sickness is hers can never be cured and the man believes it, a Christian that is to say, believes it, then the devil, the devil has a stronghold of sickness in the life of that man. If the devil tells a man he's going to be poor and the man believes it, Satan has a stronghold of poverty in the life of that man. Because God did not say so. God did not say so. So if you believe the devil, he establishes a stronghold in your life. Therefore, you should look for what God says in his word about your situation and pray on it and agree with God on it and hold God to his word that you said this 
in your word. And that is what you are going to hold on to. Let us understand this, that sin did not originate from man. Man did not produce sin. Sin invaded man. And sin conquered man. It was an invasion. And that invasion was launched by the devil. We must understand that sin did not originate with Adam. Neither did sin originate with Eve. Sin invaded Adam and Eve and conquered them. And the same pattern is what is going on till today. Christ has set you free. But even after Christ has set you free, sin consistently launches invasion against you in an attempt to conquer you and bring you back to Satan. So it's a continual battle that you have to fight against sin until you appear before Jesus Christ. Sin won't let you go. Sin is not going to say because you are now a Christian, you now speak in tongues, you now carry the Bible, therefore he is going to leave you alone. No. On a day-to-day -day basis, you must win victory against sin. Because on a day-to-day -day basis, sin will keep invading you. With the intention of conquering you and capturing you and taking you back. And where sin launches his attacks, the invasions is in your mind. In your soul realm. In your soul realm. If the devil controls your soul realm, he has won a mighty victory over you. In fact, there is nothing left. If the devil can persuade you to think the way that he thinks, even though you are a Christian, it is over. There's nothing anybody can do again. God says in his word, that if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's the principle. It is spiritual truth. But very few Christians are living this truth. Very few Christians are able to manifest this victory. Why? Because they keep yielding ground for the devil in their soul realm. And most of them, because they do not understand that their mind is the battleground. You encounter Satan in your mind. You encounter demons in your mind. If you can overcome them in your mind, you overcome them in your life. Your mind is very, very crucial. That is why in your soul realm, that is made up of your mind, your emotions, and your will, what we are going to focus on in this brief period that we have for this teaching is going to be your mind. Because once you control your mind, you will control your emotion. You will control your will. It is your mind that feeds your emotion and feeds your will. And that's what Satan and the forces of darkness are fighting for. Let us not forget it. Every believer should remember that he is responsible for materials in his mind. You are responsible. The devil will project his own thoughts. The devil will try to fill your mind with his own thoughts, but you are responsible for what is there. In the sense that you have the ability to reject what you don't want and you have the ability to choose what you want to be inside your mind. God has given each one of us that free will. We can decide. Let me give you a very good example. Two examples. Assume you are on the street and a bus passes by and there is a beautiful girl sitting inside the bus and you make eye contact just briefly and the girl is very beautiful and Satan starts projecting thoughts into your mind 
how wonderful it would be if that was your girlfriend and your mind starts going thinking and you know if you are not careful for the next 30 minutes you are still thinking about that girl you don't know her name you don't know where she lives there is no likelihood you will ever meet her again in your life she has gone she was in a moving vehicle but for the next 30 minutes if you are not careful your mind is on that girl imagining various scenarios how you will talk to her how you might take her to lunch how you why is this so because you like those thoughts so you permitted it to stay in your mind now let's look at another scenario if you are living in a place in which you see a lunatic for example on a refuse dump or you see a human being who's a drug addict completely gone to shreds by the side of the road and completely wrecked by drugs and as you are passing you turn you look and a thought comes to you suddenly and says one day that can be you you know the way you are going to fight to reject such an ugly thought that never god forbid that will not happen to me why because you don't like that one so you see that in the case of the one of the beautiful girl you can think about it for the next 30 minutes but this one about this human wreck that one you don't want to even consider if god forbid that will not happen to me because you don't like that one so in like manner whatever thought that is in your mind it is because you permitted it and god will hold you responsible for it because you have the capacity to reject it if you don't reject it it's because you like it you can't blame the devil for it the only thing the devil will do is he will project it it is now your choice whether to accept it or to reject it that is all he only projects it and there are times when satan will speak to your mind you sit down you are not suddenly a thought just suddenly lands in your mind a hideous thought a thought of doing evil at times a thought of wickedness and when the devil speaks to your mind please be aware he speaks in the first person pronoun he uses the first person pronoun suddenly a thought just comes to you i want to drink alcohol you will think it is you it's not you it's the devil projecting it another thought may come i like that girl I'm going to date her. It's not you. It's the devil projecting his own thoughts into your mind. Or, I don't like what that man has done. I'm going to deal with him. It's not you. It's the devil projecting his own thoughts. If you accept it, it becomes your responsibility because you will act on it. Therefore, when thoughts come up in your mind that are ugly, thoughts of sin, thoughts of wickedness, thoughts of unrighteousness, as a Christian, you immediately reject it. You should remember 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You have the power. The weapons of your warfare are mighty through God to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Therefore, if you think any wrongful thought in your mind, it is your responsibility. You permitted it. You need to realize the mind is the soul realm and those thoughts is the spiritual warfare you are fighting. And forces of darkness will want to fill your mind with hideous thoughts, knowing fully well, as a man thinketh, so is he. The way you think is the way you are going to behave. That was why we did a series on Think Like Jesus. 
that begin to think like Jesus. Once you think like Jesus, you will speak like Jesus, you will act like Jesus, you will live like Jesus, you will respond to situations like Jesus. It all starts from your mind, the soul realm. The soul realm. Do not doubt. God is interested in your thoughts. God is very much interested in what is going on in your mind. He's watching what is going on in your mind. Because that is what determines the actions that you are going to take. In Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. That was why God brought the flood. God read what was in the minds of the people living in those days. He saw that every imagination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. And God destroyed all of them with the flood. After the flood, after the flood. Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. God looked again and saw the thoughts in the soul of men. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people are one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Based on the imagination of the people, that was why God scattered the languages. So that man has no option to scatter and go in different places. What was God looking at? Their minds. Their soul. So, have it at the back of your mind. God is interested in what is going on in your soul realm. If your soul is permitted to be hijacked by the devil, then there is nothing God can do for you through your spirit man. Don't forget the illustration of man as the egg. Man as the egg. The egg is made of three parts. The yolk, which represents the spirit, the abumen, the white matter, which we could call the, uh, the soul, and then the shell, which we could call the flesh of man. Now, the abumen, the white matter, surrounds the spirit. If the soul of a man has been hijacked by the devil through wrongful, sinful, hateful, evil thoughts. The spirit man will find it very difficult to express the life of God. And that particular individual will through the soul control his emotion, control his will, which will find expression through the flesh as acts of unrighteousness even though he's a Christian even though he's a Christian therefore you must pay attention to what is going on in your mind remember Satan speaks in first person pronoun that is how he causes trouble between husbands and wives. Ask the husbands and wives who quarrel and fight to the point of divorce. It starts from their thoughts. One demon will speak to the wife in the kitchen. 
I don't like what my husband is doing. Why should he be sitting in the sitting room and I am in the kitchen working? I don't like it. Does he think I'm his slave? And the same demon moves to the husband in the sitting room. I don't like what my wife is doing. Uh, why is it taking her so long to prepare the food? She's not even smart. When the food comes, it's not even good. She's not a good cook. So the husband starts fuming. The wife starts fuming. It, the thought was not their own. Their minds were invaded by a demon projecting thoughts into their soul. Now, if the husband should act on it, if the wife should act on it, both of them are going to clash because they wouldn't know that it's not their own. It's not, it, it didn't originate from them. But if the husband immediately cancels it and said, I will love my wife, even if the food is not good, even if she's not, in fact, I, I think I should go and help my wife. And your wife in the kitchen says, my husband, oh, well, I, I must submit to my, to my husband anyway. If I don't like the way he's sitting down there, I'm going to ask him gently to help me. I'm sure he will help me. He's a good man. And she changes this. And consciously she decides to think something good. When the two of them meet, they will not clash. That's just an example. It happens in businesses. It happens in families. It happens amongst friends. It is your soul realm. Understand how God has configured you. And the devil is trying to take advantage of your soul to control your life. Don't allow him. In Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the Bible commands the New Testament saints. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Christian. There are two words you should pay attention to in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conform. The word conform there is the Greek word suskematizo, and it means to copy, to imitate the pattern of the world. And the second one is transformed, which is metaphor. Greek word metaphor. Metaphor is from where we derive our English word metamorphosis. Means begin to change from within. So God is saying, be not conformed. Do not copy. Do not imitate what you see in the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change the way that you think. In the world, money is all that matters. Don't be conformed. In the world, vanity reigns supreme. Don't be conformed. In the world, rebellion is the order of the day. Don't be conformed. In the world, immorality, perversion is becoming an acceptable norm. Don't be conformed. But rather, be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, deliberately change the way that you think so that you will begin to think like Jesus. Cleanse your soul realm. It is your responsibility. You must cleanse your mind because God is interested in what is going on in your mind. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Jesus Christ says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, it is they that shall see God. 
which is a way of saying, cursed are the impure in heart, they shall not see God. Your mind. Everything comes from your mind. In Matthew chapter 15, from verse, let's just read from 19 to 20. Or back, back up to verse 17. Matthew chapter 15, let's start from verse 17. Do you not yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. From your soul realm, from your mind. The things that you are thinking about, the things that you permit into your heart, those are the things that defile you. If you want to live a life of holiness, if you want to live a life of righteousness, if you want to live a godly life, control your thoughts. Take control of your soul. Take charge of your soul. Every evil thought reject it because the way you think determines the way you live the way you think determines your future the way you think will determine whether you will get to heaven or you will not get to heaven think right god bless you